uh, the age of apostasy is getting worse and worse, down to today, where it's worse than ever. People are more and more confused today. I think a number of you learning of the societies, I can remember Dr. White, Dr. David Adam White, who a number of you know of, he said, you know, if the society goes, it's going to rock a number of Catholics. They're going to be rocked off their feet because the society has been a compass. It's been not the North Star. It's held the line. The Archbishop held the line and the society held the line along Archbishop's line and it, it maintained truth. It, it, it backed truth. It continued to tell the, the great truths. It didn't give way. And if the society now begins to rock and roll and heave and to pull up its skirts and want to start jiving, then, you know, my mind, what can I hold on to? What can I, what can I still believe in? It's it, just like when Paul VI let loose Vatican II. Catholic families were divided. Uh, a lot of, there was a lot of stress and, and upset, torment, because the Pope of truth was abandoning the truth. And now the Society of Truth is abandoning truth. The la so to speak, the last seeming light is going out and minds have reason to be more confused than ever when the society gi gives way. God allows, God has his reasons for allowing. He's wanting, if he allowed Vatican II, it was surely in order to purify his church. If he's now allowing the society to rock and roll, it's in order to purify the society. One may think that tomorrow or the day after, there's going to be a very serious persecution of the church, and our Lord wants some troops in training. He wants some troops who are trained, who are re up, ready on, on, a, on, on a fighting, uh, ready to fight. Uh, uh, how do you say in English? A war footing. Thank you. Thanks, Derek. On a war footing. He wants some Catholics on a war footing, because war is coming. The war, the war is on as Father Shazar says, but the, but the war is going to be even more intense. And therefore, our Lord is wanting uh, maybe another crop of martyrs. The, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. And maybe, it may well be that God wants martyrs today for the church of tomorrow or the day after. We'll come, we'll come to that. The age of apostasy in three great rolling waves, 1517, 1717, 1917, and the chaos of 2017. The chaos of today. Uh, but, uh, according to Holzhauser, the, the, the trouble is going to be so great. And again, God alone can straighten it out. Surely, I think Cardinal Ratzi, when he was Cardinal still, some 10, 15 years ago, said it's beyond human. The situation is beyond human repair. It's irreparable. Only God can straighten this out. I think Cardinal Ratzi said that 10 or 15 years ago. Uh, the sixth, then, there's going to be a great chastisement. And then the sixth stage of the church will be the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. You may remember that, uh, that um, uh, at, at Fatima, Our Lady said that in the end my Immaculate Heart will triumph. And uh, the sixth letter, the letter to the sixth church, again, is no blame. Those are the only, the two and six are the only, of the, are the only two letters out of seven in which the Holy Ghost has no criticism to make of the particular church. Uh, it, six, uh, five is Sardis, six, I think, is Philadelphia, but I'm not sure. It is the sixth church. Uh, it's, uh, you have, uh, you have conquered, some like you have conquered, uh, you've washed, I, 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 I can't try to code, I, I need scripture. But uh, there's no blame. And it will be a period of great peace. It won't last long. I have said to you, uh, according to Our Lady of La Salette, 25 years of good harvest will make men forget what they've been through. And they won't have to reinvent computers and 707s. Uh, they will simply have to remake them because the idea, in the, in the heads of the survivors, the idea is already there. That's one reason why the degeneration may take quite fast. The generation of 500 years may happen in a mere 50 years or even less after the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Uh, it won't last long. It will be, there are many prophecies speaking of this period. Uh, it says, one prophecy says that even, ch that China, Russia and England will convert. Convert England. Um, 
China, in other words, the whole world will convert. The world will be, there will be true peace. It will be, the, the world will be Catholic. It will be the last great triumph of the Catholic Church. To sh like the, um, like the farewell performance, in a manner of speaking. That's a, that's a very human way of speaking. All of this is a somewhat human way of looking at the history of the church, because do, re do think or do, that what God wants is not a happy organization of things on earth. A happy organization of things on earth can make people content with things on earth and forget the need to get to heaven. Therefore, suffering and hardship on earth is, liable, is, is a greater help for the salvation of souls than prosperity and comfort. And that's why God allows a great deal of, 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 of hardship and uncomfort uh, on, on this world, in this world. There's hardship and uncomfort with the martyrs, obviously. There's hardship at the end of this age and so on. There's hardship all the way. And the hardship may be more favorable for the salvation of souls than, than the prosperity. Therefore, to talk of the rise of the church and the fall of the church, the prosperity of the church and then the, the, the downfall is a human way of speaking. What's happening all the time is that according to these diff seven different ages, seven different harvests of saints will be going to heaven. Uh, the different harvests of saints, the different kinds of saints, will make a greater variety in the garden of God. A good gardener has, not, has a variety of flowers in his garden and not just roses. Uh, he may not cultivate perhaps buttercups and daisies because they'll be there anyway. But uh, he's got, there are all kinds of other flowers. He will have a variety and the, the symphony of all the flowers will make the beauty of the garden as like of the orchestra. The symphony of heaven will consist in the variety of saints springing to heaven from the earth in seven different, seven quite different stages. The uh, great triumph will perhaps all too fast be turned into a decadence again, and then we arrive at the. Uh, I've got this wrong. No, 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 that's it. The seventh age is the age of the Antichrist. That is the age of the, uh, the Antichrist. Um, the Antichrist will. Uh, scripture tells us that he will. I'm sorry I have no cross here, but it's because of the microphone. Uh, the, and the scripture tells us that he will conquer three kingdoms, that he will, the, other, the, other ten, the rest of the ten kingdoms will give way to him. He will reign for three and a half years. It won't be a long reign, but it will be the most terrible persecution of all. Somebody told me just yesterday of the uh, prayer of St. Patrick on behalf of Ireland that Ireland would disappear beneath the waves before the time of the Antichrist so that Ireland would not have to suffer the persecution of the Antichrist. It will be the most terrible persecution ever. I'm sure that I won't live to see the period of the Antichrist, but I think some of the youngsters here might see it. I don't think it's all that far away. I don't think, some people think we're right now in the period of the Antichrist. I think Father Kramer thinks that the, uh, it's going to be World War II, World War III very soon, and the Antichrist. I think. If he does think that, I, I, beg, I gently beg to differ. I think we're going through the dress rehearsal for the Antichrist. The corruption that's going on now is a foreshadowing of the corruption. The corruption at the end of the fifth age is a foreshadowing, or a dress re like a dress rehearsal, of the corruption of the seventh age. The corruption of the seventh age is going to be even more terrible than today's. Today, arguably, there is still enough resistance, there's still too, they still believe it or not, too much goodness in the way of the advance of the Antichrist or the agents of the Antichrist and therefore the Antichrist is not going to come now or succeed now. This is my opinion, it's only an opinion. I don't think we get in the age of the Antichrist, but I think the Antichrist is not far away because the sixth age will not be long and the seventh age will not be long. I don't know how long it will take the Antichrist to come to power. Let's assume, that it's, it's barely an assumption, let's assume that the, uh, the, chast the chastisement comes in 10 years. Let's add 25 years of good harvest, that, that's 30, well, 35. Let's add another 10 years of corruption, 
uh, at least 10 years, maybe 15 years of corruption, we're at 35 plus 15, we're up to 50, and then the age of the, ant the Antichrist himself. It, I think purely an opinion which could easily be completely wrong, either too short or too long, I think the Antichrist might be about 60 years away. But that's just a sheer guess. God alone knows, and you know, he keeps this timetable a secret. Otherwise, we would many of us be down to the bar and drinking ourselves crazy down to, <laughs> down to the last minute, and then the priest would be super employed for the last uh, year and a half before the... the, the <laughs> The, uh, the prospect appeals to Derek. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Only if you're paying. <laughs> um, so, uh, notice there are various interesting things to notice. Um, notice that the sixth and seventh ages are like the fourth and fifth. The fourth is a long triumph, a long corruption, a swift triumph, a swift corruption. Six is to seven, as four is to five. Notice also that. Um, the, as I say, the age of the martyrs corresponds in a way, two corresponds to six, they're the two ages in which uh, our Lord does not, the Holy Ghost does not need to make reproaches to the, the churches uh, concerned. Uh, notice that um, the fifth age is the end, Conga, I think it was, a, a villainous Dominican, but you know, intelligent, uh, Father Conga, who was one of the chief heretics of Vatican II, chief thinkers of Vatican II, said that the, with, the, with, the council, with the Second Vatican Council was coming to an end the Constantinian Church. You'll notice the Constantinian Church began in 313 and it, end, it began ages, it's 345, it ends with, with five. It ends at the end, end, end of, towards the end of five. Makes sense. It makes sense. In other words, that sort of extending four with its prelude and its postlude. The, the, the thousand year triumph of Christendom, the prelude is the rise, uh, is the third age of the doctors, the postlude is the fifth age of apostasy. Uh, the fifth age is uh, the Vatican II is certainly also close to the end of the fifth age because it's the, the Vatican II. I was saying a little earlier, is like the collapse of the, of the Counter-Reformation. Uh, Christendom, uh, Protestantism breaks out, and there's, there's still a good deal of strength in the Catholic, uh, amongst Catholics. At the end of the Middle Ages, this is the Middle Ages, of course. This is the uh, pre-Middle Ages, that, those are the Middle Ages, and this is the Modern Age. So again, just in those words. Uh, when you talk about the Middle Ages, you're suggesting that it's the centre of the arch. Um, what was I saying? That uh, uh, I've lost the thread. I'm sorry. Conga. What was I just? Conga. Uh, Conga yes. Uh, Conga uh, spoke. Uh, the, the, yes. The, uh, the end of the the end of the Counter Reformation. <coughs> the Counter Reformation was the reaction of the Church to the collapse, uh, to, to Protestantism, um, and Masonry also uh, caused a reaction, a healthy reaction to the church in the 19th century. We may see that uh, quite soon. And then um, modernism caused a reaction in Pius X. Uh, the reaction of the Catholic Church to uh, the Vatican II was Archbishop of Fev and Bishop de Castromaya. Imagine a dishcloth the history of the last 500 years. Imagine a dishcloth full of water. One squeeze and a whole lot of water comes out. Uh, then to get more water, you have to squeeze twice and water will come out. In the end, you're squeezing ferociously and only a few drops come out. That's the history of this period. That's an image of the history of this period. Uh, the Protestantism was the first squeeze and out came the Counter-Reformation. Uh, Vatican II is almost the last squeeze. It's not quite the last squeeze. Perhaps the one, perhaps the very last squeeze is going on right now, as the Society of the Tenth is collapsing, as its leadership is is misleading and collapsing. Then, and you and I reacting a bit against that. We are the last drops of water. Maybe, maybe it, maybe in God's plan, the resistance will 
get, gather itself together, and then maybe there will be another corruption. Oh gosh, it's it's. Uh, in any case, it's downhill all the way. Um, this total picture is valuable, in in my opinion, because it makes sense in a way to see the symmetry, uh, to see that so to speak, there can be a great a great an organized plan. Why? Why, a reason why God is permitting the, the, the corruption of today may make it easier to bear the corruption of today. The corruption that's going on today is not completely senseless. It has a purpose. And that purpose is um, the final trial of the church, which will produce, um, incidentally, according to some prophecies, some of the greatest, greatest saints of the church. Without the, modern, without the 20th century, we wouldn't have had Padre Pio and Archbishop of Fair. Two surely pretty great saints, surely. Uh, without the Antichrist, we are not, the church would not see some of the greatest heroes of all the history of the church. Because the great persecution will call forth great heroes. Scripture speaks, you may remember, of the two prophets. Um, surely Elias and... Um, who is it? Enoch. Enoch. Enoch and Elias, that's right. Enoch and Elias, uh, who are going to step forward again, step up again, step up to the plate against the Antichrist, and will be crushed by him, but where they will give an example and give courage to the uh, resistance at that time. So this uh, schema uh, helps to make sense of what's going on today, and it also situates for us that it's normal, in a way, it's normal if uh, things just get worse and worse. Uh, it's very sad. It's it's not the way to save souls. Souls are not saving themselves by things getting worse and worse. But uh, the worse and worseness fits into a plan of God, which uh, has its final purpose. The Antichrist will be defeated. The world will come to an end. The general judgment, and so on. So, uh, Almighty, in a, in a manner of speaking, Almighty God, in a, in, this is a very human way of speaking. In a, manner, in a very human way of speaking, Almighty God does know what he's doing in allowing what's going on today. 